Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. Today we'll be doing a few tangles, then I'll show you how to draw a ribbon and colour it so that it looks like gold. Today I'll be working on a 3.5 inch square tile. I'll be using a 2B pencil or a Zentangle pencil, a Tortillon, a Micron 01 and two HB pencils that are roughly the same size. I'll also be using some Prismacolor pencils and I'll go into more detail about what colors I'll be using later in the video. I'm going to set up my tile by drawing four dots and a border. Once I've done that, I'm going to find the two pencils that are the same size and hold them together. If you find it difficult to draw with these like this, take them together. So I'm going to hold them this way so that the two points are vertically aligned and keep them at this angle as I draw a swirl. I'll do the same thing once more. Notice that the position of the tips does not change. Now I can just use one of the pencils to join the edges. So I'll be drawing some vertical lines and if I zoom in you can see what I'm doing. So whenever there's a curl I'm just going to join those lines up and also at the ends. I'll do the same thing on this other curl. I'm going to use an eraser just to get the flow of the ribbon. Decide whether you want the ribbon to go under or over each time it curls and it doesn't matter which way you go. Once you've made that decision, erase any lines so that you don't need. Now that I have the ribbons the way that I want them, I can go over them with a black micron pen. You might like to practice this a little bit before you start on your tile. Make sure that the pencils are at the same level before you start. And I'm just going to start slightly off the page and bring it down and make a swirl. And this time I'm going to go around and over and then head back down right off the page. So now with one pencil I'll do the same thing as I did before, put in those vertical lines at each turn and at the ends. Well actually we don't really have any ends because we went off the page. Because we've got that extra crossover part, uh, we'll have to decide which way the ribbon is going. So go along and rub out any of the lines that you don't need until you're happy with it. If you feel you've made a wrong decision, it's still in pencil. So I'm going to have this line going over this part of the ribbon. So I'll rub out those lines. Yeah. 
and you can redefine your lines whenever you need to. Keep doing this all the way along the length of your ribbon. Then once you get to the end where the border is, I'm going to erase that part of the border as well. I'm not going to ink my ribbon straight away. When I draw my patterns, I want some of them to overlap the ribbon as if they're weaving in and out and that will give a more three-dimensional effect. I'll be using some organic tangles so I'll start with poke root and make one of them overlap the ribbon. Once I've done a few of these I'll add the pattern vertigo. Most of it will sit behind with a couple of little strands overlapping the ribbon here and there. When you're drawing these strands going off the initial stem, add quite a few so that they end up reasonably thick. If you don't, once we colour in the background, they'll end up looking a little bit spindly. Once I've gone on both sides drawing these spikes, you can see I'm coming back through and drawing a few more as if they're sitting behind the others. And I can keep doing this, adding more and more layers. Once I've got all my patterns drawn, I'm going to colour the background black. So if you find that you make some little funny leaves like I did at the top, you'll be able to rectify that a little bit when you colour the background. So now I'm going down, adding some mocha, as if it's dripping down. So I'm going to overlap a few of these. Add a few more poke root at the bottom until I find that I've got enough pattern to be interesting. Now I'm going to go right around the border and outline it. Notice I stop when I get to the ribbon and because I've finished drawing I can colour in the background. I can also outline my ribbon. And there it is all coloured in. I'm just going to use my eraser to get rid of some pencil lines that are on that actual ribbon. Now I'm going to go around and put some shading. Don't shade the actual ribbon, just the patterns in the background.
you can see on the vertigo that I'm just putting a little bit of shading where each of those strands overlap. Now blend it all in with your tortillon. I'll go back to my sketchbook to demonstrate the gold effect. Now you can see here I'm using a gold gel pen. Gold gel pens are good for fine lines here and there, but as you can see, it looks pretty flat if I want to colour a wide ribbon. The Prismacolor pencils also come with a metallic gold. So I'm going to colour the other side of the ribbon with this pencil. And as you can see, it's still got a fairly flat effect. I've picked out four different coloured pencils. And you can see that the difference between the light and the dark is quite a long way away. They're not very close in value at all. And I think that's really important. So I'm using a very light yellow. And this is called lemon yellow. And that's Prismacolor 915. The next color I've selected is goldenrod. So it's in the same family of colours, but they're not close in value. The next colour is Burnt Ochre. And the very darkest colour I'm using is called dark umber. You could do another ribbon that's shiny with another color, but use the same kind of um, effect. Choose colors that are quite different in value and that way you'll have a more glossy effect. So you can see now I'm using the very lightest pencil to put in some lines where I want the highlights and I've left sections that are just going to be white. Then I went with my second darkest and coloured some of the darker sections that are underneath the curls and in between those yellow sections and I'm going to add that darker pencil only where the, the ribbon curls. I can add a little bit in those other sections, but a lot fainter. Now you'll have to be patient with this. Just keep gradually adding layers. If you press lightly and just go gradually, you'll get a much smoother blend. You can see it starting to develop now, that glossy effect. So say if I chose red pencils, find a really light red, and then the last pencil you use will be quite dark. You could even use a brown. But make sure that none of them are close in value. And there's the overall effect and you can see it looks much more realistic than the gold gel pen did. 
So I'm going to start by putting in my highlights. Notice I'm going down in vertical stripes, leaving that white part in between those two strips of yellow. I'm going to leave the white part. If I try to blend a white pencil, it will make the whole thing look a little bit milky and we don't want that. We want it to look really glossy. So I'll continue now just adding layers, alternating the pencils till I build up the effect that I want. You'll find that once you get to the end and uh, you've got a few layers down, you'll start need, needing to press a little bit harder with your pencils until you end up with a quite a burnished effect and all your colours blending quite nicely. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you'd like to share your work in my Facebook group, there is a link below this video. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen. There's a subscribe button.